iPhone and Android users, we have a free app. Download it today. AndrewHogue.com Three, yeah. two, one. This is Andrew Hogue for AndrewHogue.com, still Australia's first and only 24-7 metal radio station. I'm uh, acquainted with my good friend, Mr. Barney Greenway from Napalm Death. Of course, coming back to Australia in the coming, uh, well, I guess, weeks. Weeks are flying yeah. fast. And um, just going to catch up with uh, Barney and see what the hell's been happening aside from breaking ankles and recovering fast. What's been happening aside from that? Breaking ankles and recovering fast. <laughs> yeah, like that, that. That's about as long and short of it. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's been it's been pretty much normal service resumed, you know. I mean, we've been touring, uh, mainly actually in Europe and the US because post the lockdowns and stuff, those places were the, you know, the first to kind of open up really. Other places around the world, you know, Australasia included, were a, were a little, um, a little sort of uh, slower to open up. Um, so yeah, that's 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 effectively what we've been doing. You know, have you noticed any shifts since you've been back out on the road? Is, does it just feel a little bit different, just with the world where we're at now, or is it just actually bit, not? Well, actually not, and probably depressingly in a lot of ways because you know I think that you know I was hoping that if anything good was to come out of the pandemic situation and the lockdowns was that people had a greater appreciation of the world around them. Mm. But honestly, I think it's just normal service resumed, you know, which I say is good in some ways, not so good in others. You know, I don't think, you know, are, are human beings treating their fellow human beings any better? Well, some are and some aren't, you know, which is much the same as it was before. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've sort of noticed the same thing. I think our, our minds have just rever reverted back to normality. I mean, we were craving it. The certainty, the human need is is really strong. And when we didn't have that, everyone was kind of freaking out. And then as soon as it's come back, what what sort of pandemic? It's almost like we've just erased it. Uh, yeah. All these parts of society have kind of just wiped it from our minds. Like I said, sometimes there's lessons in there if you're aware of it. And most of the time people just close off and uh very move true on to that so very true you don't feel yeah. like you, you don't notice anything different when it comes to live shows people are just not like, so much not yep. so much no well not so much is overstating it nothing at all really you know it's pretty much the same as it was before it, interestingly i had the first person say to me the other day and i forget who it was he's in passing conversation that they just tested positive for covid and i was just like Oh, right, you know, and they were like, yeah, yeah, um, I just went home and didn't feel very well. Okay, all right then. Um, and that was that, the conversation over, you know. And yeah. it's it's interesting how, how it was back then to what it is now, you know, the way that's kind of perceived. It's a lot different. You know, I was, I had, um, luckily my, my, I mean, my dad's died, you know, my dad died la uh, late last year, you know, not, not from COVID related stuff, but yeah, totally. um, you know, I was really concerned for my parents, you know, during the, during the whole thing, they managed to isolate themselves very effectively, but you know, it was, it was brutal. You know, that whole thing. I got it myself the first time I got it that I know of, at least that I tested, mate, it was rough, you know, and I'm, I'm fit, you know, so I'm, I'm fairly fit. But it, it it absolutely knocked the living daylights out of me. You know, I was delirious, you know, for a couple of days, literally delirious, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, such is life, I guess, you know. Do you think things have changed on the political front with the way the world is sort of operating? Because the US is a total shit show and uh, I don't watch Mate, it's always been a shit show. <laughs> it's, it's never been any different, you know. Mm. I mean, this is the thing. You know, I understand why certain events make people um, think that it's, it's you know, somehow, you know, infinitely worse, you know, but it's always been a shit show, you know, for one reason or another. Human beings have not learned how to treat each other or other sentient beings, actually. We have not learned how to do that, you know. I mean, you know, not, 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 not to pick on Australia per se, but I mean, look at the situation with the Aboriginal community. 100%. Has it moved on to where it should? No, it hasn't, you know. And in a developed world, so-called, you know, 
the fact that that can't happen, I mean, it's, it's shameful, you know. 100%. And again, I'm not singling Australia out. You could apply this to many different places around the world, you know. I mean, Napalm Death as a band, you guys have just toured pretty much every corner of the globe compared to most bands. So what's one specific country that really still stands out in your mind of a country that really just has it together where you've just gone, man, other countries could learn a bit more about how to do things properly, considering, like I said, all the places you've been. You know, I I wouldn't wouldn't sort of patronise people, you know, um, those on the other side of that you know the equation you know in in other words the ones that weren't up to snuff or whatever i would i would never say that i think that's actually really rude you know and too much of a generalization the one thing i would say and this is again not to denigrate other countries when we go there at all is is japan you know i mean Mm. i'm sure it's i'm sure you know this anyway but japan is just so it's just something about it you know it's just you never need to worry about something that ordinarily you would have to worry about usually. You know, those guys tend to have, the promoters in Japan tend to have quite a 360 view of things, you know, and that before you can uh, concern yourself with something, already somebody else has already thought of it, you know what I mean? And it's instinctive almost in Japan. And, and it, it also helps that the people that we work with in Japan are the same people we've always worked with. You know, they... They are ind- very independent people uh, that you certainly couldn't call them metal promoters. They're not. And I think that's a good thing. You know, that works in our favor, definitely. Uh, very, like I say, very independent, very mindful of the gigs and the people that come to the gigs, you know, and um, always making things right for people. And yeah, I mean, it just, it just an altogether, um, you know, a great experience in Japan. It's not. It's not great anywhere else, but Japan really knows how to do it. You know, I think. Yeah. Now, obviously, over the years, you've been very outspoken about human rights, especially lyrically as well. Have you seen that movie, The Sound of Freedom, yet? Regarding the sort of human trafficking of children, the film that came out, I think, a couple of weeks ago. I must admit, I don't. I must okay. admit, I haven't. You know, I yeah. definitely heard the title somewhere, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen yeah, it, I haven't seen know. it either. So I was just curious. I think Mel Gibson might have produced it, or I think maybe he's got something else coming out to do with the Pope, or he's working on something. But I, I'm trying. Right. To uh, ain't it the... funny that Mel Gibson would do it, considering some of the things that he's said down the years. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, not he sure said if he... some... Let me double check it. I'll see if I can find some quick info. Would it be Mel Gibson? I'm not sure. It might be, might be, you know. Yeah, it's called The Sound of Freedom. Uh, It's a 2023 American action film directed and uh, co-written by Alessandro Monteverdi or something. Definitely not Mel Gibson. Definitely not Mel Gibson. I know know Mel Gibson's working on something else. I've just seen short videos about him exposing the whole Catholic or religious something. I don't know. I got to Google's your friend. Yeah. it's uh yeah it's a film about you know human trafficking of uh of children and apparently it's it's stirring up a lot of um uh interest across the globe of you know lots of big name people just saying go and see this film so it came out well yeah definitely that definitely sounds like so but but there's you know there's a there's a there's a wider um there's a wider scope to this though you know Mm -hmm. i mean i've seen the film but it's talking about the reference point it talks about trafficking but it, it goes a bit beyond that. I mean, there are countries in the world that are still using child labour. Oh, and that tends right. to get swept under the carpet, you know, because yep. it's only, you know, if it's only done in certain in certain, um, um, certain parts of different industries. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not acceptable. Right. You know, kids don't have a choice, you know, to, to do this stuff or not. They're usually uh, utilised as a resource. That's, that's it's bullshit you know what i mean yeah. just, there's no excuse to have children involved in the labor force at all at any time you know so that i would just add that to the to the mix yeah really, and like know. i said you're being quite outspoken do you feel fans sort of take notice of these messages through the sounds of, of napalm death because it's such no, a i think so garage, but i it, think so but 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 you know and, and i i don't mean this in a weird way or a disrespectful way um but even if people did or didn't that wouldn't concern me you know it's yeah me as a person to me if the world's going to improve things like this have to be fucking changed you know what i mean mm-hmm. 
this is not acceptable you know for these things it's just not if the human race is worth anything you know these things are just not acceptable you know but but yeah you know I, people do tell me that the ideas and the music definitely resonate with them so great you know i mean you would hope so because that's yeah. a very that's front and center of what napalm death is you know the 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 attack of the music you know the quirks of the music because napalm death does have certain quirks in the music and but also the ideas it's front and center of the band you know so if it's worth anything you would hope that that it resonates with people even yeah. if they chew it over and they either don't agree with it or they don't sort of follow it up as much as some other people might i mean fine you know whatever you know but it's it's a it's a it's absolutely vital cog of the band you know so yeah and again looking at your lengthy history with the group i mean most people can't hold a job down for more than 18 months but let alone 33 years <laughs> yeah. it's astounding but and for what i you don't do consider it well part of the reason well, as in, sorry to cut across you you know as a job part, part of the yeah i don't think of it as a job mm. never did you know it was never yeah. a, a stepping stone on my cv you know if anything you might say that it's a vocational thing in life but it was yeah. never a career it's not a clocking clock off job it was never that you know it's you know it's it's unfortunate to be involved in something where you know creative artistic things can happen you know that's that's not a job you yeah. know there's no kind of oh god you know have i got to go to work this morning or something like that you know it's, it's not like that at all you know, and like I said, you, yeah, like, you know, you've, you've gone through so many different changes over the years with, with the band and the sound and whatnot, and scenes have come and gone, but Napalm just still, still holds strong. So were there any moments during, I guess, the last 33 years of just, yeah, why, why, why am I doing this? Has that ever crossed your mind? Like, yeah, of course that, yeah. but that's something different. That That's something that everybody faces, whatever you do in life whether it's for pleasure or whether it's for necessity, there's going to be points where you question what you do. Yep. That, that's completely natural. You know, I mean, definitely, you know, there could be instances where there's a tension about something. And I don't necessarily mean internally in the band. I mean, you know, generally speaking, and you just can't think, yourself, is this what it's come to? You know, mm. have, have I, have we not strived to be the band that we are, you know, not, not just following the norm, you know, to be faced with this, you know, and you kind of think, uh, do I need to bother with this anymore? Everybody has those questions of concerns. Um, I'm sure there might come a point where, you know, health, health wise, or just plain had enough, you know, just really don't want to gallivant across the world anymore. As great as that is. And as, fortunate as a position you are in to get to see places that 99 percent of people will never see you yeah. know um there's going to come a point where maybe it just becomes something you don't want to do anymore you know it's going to happen with napalm death at some point it will every not you know not every, good things don't don't last forever you know they just yeah. don't you know so it is well, what it is but sorry mate. i read an interview with you about you know not phoning it in which you don't on the live front which is phenomenal so what what keeps you so enthusiastic about you know being in napalm death because it's such napalm a napalm death just the that's band. it you know yep. oh, mate it would not have been any other band you know i'm not a career musician you know i joined napalm death because i wanted to be in napalm death i had zero interest in okay i did my own bands with other people back in the day before I joined Napalm Death. But, you know, not to sort of over romanticize this, but but Napalm Death is where I feel I was meant to be. Yeah. It couldn't be another band. You know, it it, 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 just, it just really is meant to be this because it challenges the norms, you know, because it doesn't just toe the line, you know, because it does what it needs to do, because it doesn't it doesn't mold itself to any perceived demographic it doesn't do any of that you know and and because of that that's why i'm still around yeah. you know had that it were there points where you know it was just we collectively decided to jump on a bandwagon and oh, I'm, I'm not interested in that i'd rather not do it you know if it yeah. came to that point really rather not you know so 
So if you're at some kind of social gathering where people don't really know much about what you do and uh, you put your hand out to shake it and you say, yep, hi, my name's Barney. And they say, what do you do? What do you respond? Oh, I'll just say, you know, I'll, I'll play music and stuff. That, that's you all I say, do. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't, don't talk know. about it. Yeah, I don't really? talk about it unless 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 um, it, people ask me directly. You know, I, I just don't. You know, it just... So if they I'll ask just directly... Write, how do you respond? You say, I play in a band called Napalm. Yeah, I'm in a band. Oh, okay. I, 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 I play music. Sort of style of music. And if they band. then ask from there, yeah, I'll, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to bullshit them. I'll, I'll say what, what I do, you know, and, yeah. and and wherever the conversation goes from there, you know, yeah, I mean, what, you know, what, what else am I going to say, I suppose, you know, but it's like, yeah, I mean, I don't make a big deal of it unless, unless people are, you know, unless it, it warrants that in a conversation. Yeah. If people are having, if the conversation's going that way deeper and deeper, then yeah, yeah, I don't have a problem then, you know. But so tell us a bit about new music because I know you guys are always very consistent. I know Shane's been working on projects and stuff, but there's always something going on in the fire of the camp of uh, yeah. I mean, he's, so working with Russ. I mean, is yeah, I mean, he's been working on. Um, um, stuff in the background Shane um so uh, there's nothing more I can say other than he's working on some stuff I haven't heard any of it yet you know yeah. but so he's working on stuff so you know we hope to start shaping something up by the end of this year I would probably say that's just my projection right now you know but that's about where we are right now so yeah not much else I can say beyond that really but okay now, looking back on the career, I mean, what album number 16 you're up to now, is there one specific period where you could look back on and go, yeah, that was just a wicked era of napalm, you know, early 90s? Well, again, you know, sorry to be pedantic, but I'm going to say <laughs> it was never looked at it as a career, you know. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, you know, I mean, phew. when I when I think when I first joined the band, <clears throat> it was such a, such a culture shock for me, you know. Um, I'd gone from working in engineering, you know, back in Birmingham yeah. or in the car industry to being out on the road, not knowing how if I was going to get any money, whether we were going to get paid, where my next meal was coming from, which was usually peanut butter on toast, you know, <laughs> actually, literally. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a culture shock. Um, but it was exciting and breathless and... You know, um, naive. I was fucking naive. You know, we we, we were we were a new phase of the band, and um, did we really know what we were going to be doing? No, not really. You know, um, but we just kind of ran with the ball. You know, so yeah, it was exciting. Um, other other times, I would say probably from Enemy of the Music Business onwards, just seemed to be a new lease of life for the band. You know. Yeah. And ever since then it's been onwards and upwards and when i say that i don't necessarily mean you know in terms of cracking the market as, as they might say but yeah. i mean just being a being a being people being receptive to the band being able to go places and play being able to come to australia after seven years of not being down there and there's still a a, a, a throng of people that want to see us i mean what what more could you ask for really you know mm. not much you know and a lot of people you know who don't dig right into the uh the early history you probably don't realize that you know there's no original official members from the earlier years but they see the band now as being that's the entity of 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 napalm so do you sort of look back and think yeah i, I came in at a, a different phase of the group do you yeah like the earlier earlier stuff before you sort of join we listen back to scum you're just like wow it's just vicious but here's the thing: there wasn't any original members left in 1987. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, good point. Yep. So I mean, you know, that's as far as it goes back. And I'm again, you know, I'm just making that point. You know, mm. um, looking back on, yeah, it's, to me, it's all napalm death. I don't consider it less or more. You know, it's it's yeah. all part of the timeline of the band. You know, so I love that stuff, that early stuff. Fuck, it looks like napalm was my favorite band before I joined. You know. You know, uh, uh, as as back in the really early days, pure punk band. You know, from from one generation back of punk, even yeah. fucking great band. You know, uh, 
I only wish more people could have seen Napalm Death live as a three piece back in the day. Absolutely fucking phenomenal, you know. Mm. I knew, I'm not saying I'm the Oracle or anything, but yeah. I knew back then for me, this is a special band, you know, that was. Yeah. Did you ever think that you would front that when you were watching them live? Just Fuck like, no. You were just like, wow, what is this? Fuck no. No, yeah. not for a minute, you know. At that point, I wasn't even thinking about doing vocals or anything. I was mm. just, you know, getting treated like a fucking idiot on an on a, on a, a engineering apprenticeship, you know, back in Birmingham. You know, that's, yeah. that's what I was doing, you know. Like getting paid fucking shit wages to, w with a lot of responsibility, and you know, no regrets. Yeah, no, I don't. You know, I don't have any regrets. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did it. And you know, I I also should say it's important to recognise that I also have Shane and Mickey, you know, the the drummer before Danny, to thank for that because they're the yeah. ones that got me in the band. They could have picked from a whole. Um, a whole raft of people you know but they chose me and had they not been for them we would not be talking right now you know so. yeah absolutely i'm going to check out the tour dates because i can't wait to have the band come back to uh oz and the first show kicks off on tuesday the 5th of september at the magnet house in perth thursday the 7th at lion hearts factory in adelaide the 8th in uh, sydney at the factory theater the ninth in uh, Melbourne at the Croxon. That's on a Saturday and finishing up in Brisbane at the Trifford on uh, the 12th of September. So it's always a pleasure to reconnect. Can't wait to see you again in the flesh, yeah. Barney. So we can get you to choose. Like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll get you to choose your favorite Napalm track from when you weren't in the group. We're talking, you know, the Ooh. earlier, earlier stuff. And then a track, a couple of tracks from your favorite uh albums that you are a part of and even something from i guess benediction subconscious terror do you ever think about oh, that God. yeah that yeah yeah a part of got that on vinyl and picture disc yeah uh so where do which one first all right just go with some early napalm the stuff that uh you weren't a part of and you're just like wow what is this yeah um i'm gonna pick a track like from the early days of the demo it's called one called what man can do if you can even find that do you know okay. what i mean i'll search around um, for it or, or I'll give you one from the first or second album just in case yep. if you want. It might be difficult, but please play that first one if you can find it. Um, from the first or second album, I'm going to say um, um, I'm going to say conservative shithead. You know, because it means a lot of the things, you know. Yeah. I'll pick that one because of the title, you know. Who was responsible yeah. for that title? Uh, it would have been, um, it would have been Nick Bullen, I think, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that would be an early track, um, if not the first one. Uh, what was the next one, sorry? Uh, just something from the, two, two, two tracks from the era that you've been a part of, the last 16 records. Fuck you know. Um I'm gonna pick um I'm gonna pick a I'm gonna pick self betrayal. Because I haven't played that one because I was thinking about that the other day. It's a mean track that is. It's like uh it's kind of the swans killing joke sort of aspect to the band, you know. So like alternative side of the band, which Napalm has a considerable, you know, yeah. element of that in the music. And it's a it's a cold, harsh track that one. Really good one to play live, you know. Self betrayal. So I'll pick that one. Yep. Uh let's pick a fast one. I'm actually gonna pick one I picked for um a guy on a couple of interviews ago because he was also asking. There's a track called Work to Rule, and I think it's yes. on it's on either um oh um Time Waits for No Slave or possibly or or smear campaign either one of those i can't remember exactly which but yeah it's 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 a really got a really fucking savage middle part you know and not, yeah. we, we've never really played it we played it a little bit when the album came out but not much since and i'd really like to play that one again live you know so all right and um how many is that that's what three songs now and something off subconscious terror just for the sake of it oh god you know uh you, now you're asking you know i actually 
I'd, I'd sung with those guys for obviously since the album came out because we never really did it. We did two gigs and that was it. And I went on stage I'm in Brazil um, three or four weeks ago because we happened to be there at the same time and it was a fucking disaster. I'd, I'd kind of learned the song yeah. previously a few weeks before and then forgot about it. And I, I, I just didn't think they'd ask me to go on stage and then I did. And we did Subconscious Terror. And fucking hell, I was all over the place. You know, just, like, well, how does this go again? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I was doing it on the fly, and it was it was a fly that was fucking drunk and had just, you know, <laughs> fallen out of the sky. Let's put it like that. So, is there footage? Um, yeah. I better check YouTube. So I, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, um, for that album, um, God, I can't even remember half the songs that were on there. Um, Oh, I can't even remember. Um, let, me see, uh, let me look it up. I love the Google Net machine. If you, if you can pull the track list up then, and just run down them, I'll, I'll pick one. Yeah. Let's have a look here. Always remember that intro. Walks, walks, walks. Yeah. Intro, yep. uh, let's have a look. All right, there we go. Benediction. Um Okay, it's not bringing up a track listing. Let me see if I can find. That. Track list, oh, there we go. Okay, so let's have a look. Yeah, there was the intro, Portal to Your Phobias, and there was Subconscious Terror, Artifacted Irreligion, Grizzled Finale, Eternal Eclipse, Experimental Stage, Suspended Animation, Divine Ultimatum, Spit Forth the Dead, and Confess Go for Eternal Eclipse. Oh, goodness. All right, cool. Yeah. We can lock that in. All right, look forward to having you back in odds very soon. Yeah, okay. All right, mate. Yeah, will do. Yeah, are you, uh, are you going to be around at all, or? Of course, I'm going to be there, mate. Perth or something. Oh, not Perth. I won't be going to Perth. It's the other side of the uh, the country. But I, th uh, I thought you. I do seem to remember you showing up there. I think at some point. No, oh, maybe I'm just fucking imagining things. I think I did come to a Perth show one time. But I think yeah, you my did. Brain, I'm sure you did because I remember you being there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, memory. But look where up, are you? Anyway, you. where are you Melbourne. based? Melbourne. Are you Melbourne? Oh, yeah. So you mate, extortion. That that's that's. That's where they're, that's, you know, yeah. Yeah, there's a band. There's a fucking band. You know? No, I'm well. Yeah. Let's check out some Napalm Death on uh, andrewhug.com and uh, travel safe and I'll see you very soon. All right, mate. Take care of yourself. No worries.